his mystical chain. Last time, not only did we bust some ghosts, one and a half to be precise, we were also called an ass by the game. Not once, but twice. But let's forget about that and face our next opponent. It's Remilia, the Scarlet Devil. Oh, what's this? It's not only Remilia, but her sister Flandre. She wants to join the action. Well, whether we like it or not, we're gonna have to do this fight in the basement. Not a nice place to be, though that bed looks kind of cozy. If you look at it closely, there's a little Marissa doll on it. Just shows us what Flandre likes. Anyway, those two sisters. Those ferocious little vampires. They're the first boss where I'd say I kind of always struggle. I have actually never really seen anyone who was kind of good at them. They always make you seem like you're playing sloppy. I really don't know what it is. First spell card though. Emilia tries to throw the Kirkgun mirror at you, and Flandre uses these little sticky bombs on you to make you explode. You can attack each of them after they've thrown out their ammunition. To evade the spear, just stay behind Remilia. And for Flandre's bombs, you can either um, dash really quickly, just before they explode. Or you can just switch to the other character. I'd recommend the latter, because the timing for dashing away from that is so tricky. And that there was a real big mistake. I got impaled by the Gunir. If that's the case, Flamba and Remilia start double teaming you. So mean. It takes up such a huge chunk of health. It's unreal. That's it for the first spell card. Second one is a little bit more dangerous. I think Vermilia is easier to attack here, but you can also beat up Flandre to for some extra damage. Look at her, she's so happy when she's making havoc. That's just how she is. Anyways, this fight really is one that I'd class as somewhat more somewhat harder. I haven't really ever seen anyone do kind of good at it. It always looks so sloppy. When it only starts looking really sloppy at the very later spell cards. But overall, it's some different caliber compared to the first three bosses. Here we see Flandre's four of a kind spell. What you do for this one is you first defeat all the, all the clones and then maybe you can get hit on, on Flandre. From time to time, Amelia will be materialized out of her bat form and also be attackable. But you should always try to go for the offense here and not just wait for a good attack. thing in this here are the bats. They have such a huge hitbox. Even though they're not really fast, they're always kind of in the way. You know, some, something that I find so peculiar about Flandre are her wings. They look so funny and colorful. 
Okay, Christmas tree. True story right now. Um, Flandre got her wings um, after she saw a Christmas tree. So she just stole the ornaments, set the tree on fire, and left. Well, she set the house on fire too. And the people living in it. Actually, that's just bullshit and not a real story. But it could be. For this spell card, you have to air dash a lot. I don't know what it is with games and me and always having air dashes. Maybe it's just a thing that has become so popular. Or maybe it's just something that um, is always attributed to Toho. I mean, it was in Toho Katsugeki Kidan Volume 2. And it is in here. When you air dash, you're always invulnerable. I don't think there's anything that kind of breaks your air dash. Well, this spell is almost done, but it's always annoying if you have to wait for another opportunity in this one. And we're done. Well, not in the whole, of course. We have one final spell to go, and for this one, they're gonna use all of their ferocious power. Not like those new sissy, girly man vampires and wussy vampires that have been popping up so often lately. Those two are some real killers. Anyway, you see that the screen has turned blood red. Very nice atmosphere for this. It really makes it seem kind of big and important. Always watch the edges of the screen for those little shimmers. With those you can see which um, course the sisters will fly in. They'll get faster and faster. And at the very end, they'll crash into the middle. That's where you can attack. I always leave someone in the middle for that. Now something that I've only done this time and that I've never been able to do before is beat this spell card in one go. Usually I have so much trouble with this, but it just kind of happened here. Good night sisters, on to the next round. just breached the 30 coupling points, that means we'll always get the uh, best ending, no matter what. Except if we die. And the fifth boss has something special. It is always the one character that you didn't choose at the beginning. In our case, that would be Alice. I guess the little girl got out of her, her little crying corner. Now she's miffed at us. So very missed. Depending on which team you chose, the fifth boss will always be different. It could either be Alice, Marissa, or Pachuli. I kind of think Pachuli is the hardest. Alice, not so much. Another reason why I like uh, the team that I chose. spell card is kind of simple. You only have to uh, leave each character at a different side and switch to the one who she walks into. And you can easily, easily break your guard. One little thing that I want to mention about boss rush mode is that you don't have any extra continues for this. You lose both of your characters, you start from scratch. Game of man, game of. In the regular story mode, you have some extra lives depending on your difficulty. But not here. But in normal mode, that's not a huge, not a huge deal. Game isn't too high.
5 to 1 credit clear. We're already at the second spell card. Here, Alice whips off her explosive little dollies. She has three patterns she uses, and she's kind of difficult to break here. Really makes you wonder where she gets all these dolls. You could say she conjures them up, but you know what? She probably uh, pulls them out of her butt. Would explain why she's so tsundere and so many turns. I don't do too well on this one, but uh, it suffices. On higher difficulty, she gets some extra patterns. Yeah, I really do kind of badly here. Here I get another hit, luckily. But in the end, I kind of lose my patience. And just blast you with the Master Spark. Like you. Satisfying to use. You can see how many supers you have left. Um, they're represented by the blue bars in the top left corner, right below your health bar. And the funny thing is, if you usually they fill up by getting hit. But if you have punchery in your group, they will always fill up automatically. That's why I like her so much. She has her downsides though. She has so much delay after some of her attacks. Leaves her wide open. This is the very last spell card that you're seeing now. I once again use that strategy where I leave one of the girls on each side. So if those um, silly dogs getting up on me, I can get some room. Now did you see that? How she just got hit by the Master Spark? And jumped out of it like with nothing? So badass. Anyway, this spell is almost done. I really don't know how to evade that very last phase. But it doesn't matter. We have the firepower that's necessary to put it to an end. That's it for this time. Next episode, we'll conclude this. I'm Gish86, bis bye.